Hi guys and girls. Thanks for all the feedback on last week's brain teaser. All week I've been pestering the physicists and chemists I know to see what they think will happen to red hot glass. Will it or won't it be transparent? This turned out to be a really good nerd sniping question. Everyone I asked had a different answer. Everything from, of course it is or isn't transparent, to leave me the hell alone I'm trying to work. I also found out that this is a really, really bad pickup line. Hey baby. So tell me, if this glass was as hot as you, do you think it's still transparent to visible light? Two people took me up on my challenge for video feedback. The Nerd Report and PowerM 1985. On the off chance that you haven't subscribed to their channels, I highly recommend checking them both out. Is molten glass still transparent? Well, after years of studying chemistry and working in labs, I can tell you that I don't have a clue. I honestly don't know. I'm an organic chemist or bio-organic chemistry. I, I don't deal with physical or inorganic and I've been racking my brain for the last few days trying to figure this one out and I, I don't know. So, my final prediction is that molten glass is transparent and that we simply can't see through it because our view is obscured by the black body radiation that's emitted. So there's two answers to my challenge. And yes, in science, I don't know is a perfectly acceptable answer. It's when someone claims to know everything that you get into trouble. I'm fairly confident that yes, the glass will remain transparent even when it's red hot and starting to melt. First things first, why do objects glow when they're hot? Well, objects at temperatures above absolute zero all give off radiation without exception. The thermal jiggling of the atoms in the material caused this. For black objects, this radiation follows a curve that looks like this. For those of you who don't like graphs, if such monsters even exist, all this means is that when you heat something up, it gives off more photons and each photon has more average energy. The thing that I, and a lot of the physicists I tried to talk to about this, had a hard time getting our heads around, was how something could give off visible light without absorbing it. For a photon to be produced, some process has to produce it. What's to keep an incoming photon from simply being absorbed by the reverse reaction? After doing a bit of research, I came across a couple of measurements that really helped explain what's happening. These graphs show how much of a given color can get through one centimeter of glass. This means that over 90% of the visible light passes through the glass. So it's not actually perfectly transparent, it's still losing 10% of its energy for every centimeter it penetrates. Now I'm guessing that when the glass is heated to red hot temperatures, it will only give off about 10% of the visible light we would expect from a black bot, from a perfect black bot. That means that, that while the glass will glow, it'll still be almost completely transparent to light being shone on it. The second effect that might make the glass glow brighter than we would expect is that unlike a black body, which can only give off light from its surface, the glass can give off light from inside the body as well. But all this armchair philosophizing is useless without some kind of experimental backup. The fact that glass is transparent relies on something called an energy gap. 60 Symbols has a great discussion on this, and I highly recommend you check it out. I don't know how this gap changes during a transition from a solid to a liquid, but it could render my hypothesis completely wrong, completely invalid. Or it could do absolutely nothing at all. That's what we're going to find out tomorrow. Hey guys, so here's the setup we're going to be using for the laser experiment. It's basically a glass lathe with a rod in the middle. We're shining a laser down one end that will pass through the end of the ends of the rod and then onto this piece of paper, which will tell us if the light's getting through. The glass lathe is perfect for this experiment because you can mount a laser outside it that is able to shine straight down the glass rod without being obstructed by machinery. Now that we've got an experiment designed, let's test our hypothesis. <laughs> this is really cool. It's weird, this is picking up a lot of garbage. Like the, visually it's very clear the laser's there, but if you look through the camera, you've got that big glow of, I'm assuming it's picking up the infrared or something. Yeah, mine was, the, the other one was the infrared. 
The sound here got really bad, but you can see that pulling the camera back made the green light of the laser really stand out. That's a lot closer to what it actually looks like to the human eye. The camera was picking up a lot of infrared radiation given off by the heated glass. If we'd been really clever, we would have thought of putting an infrared filter between the camera and the paper screen. We did the experiment a second time, this time with a red laser, just to make sure the green light wasn't a fluke. You don't want to look at that bright light from the forge too much, right? Okay. For your eye. Now it looks like an alien drive. <laughs> yeah, we're getting a lot more background light coming through. Do we still see the? Uh... We can still see the laser here, although the camera's ability to distinguish the two lights is the sunlight light. But visually, it's still extremely kind of obvious. Yeah, it's kind of kind of <laughs> I'm a little concerned for the chip in my camera. <laughs> well, for the sensor in the camera. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That is cool. So that have you drawn that out a, a bit? No, no that's no, just, just it's from its thermal it expansion. It's probably just kind of pulled its, itself but from whatever tension was on it. But. Well, that was cool. So, what's the final verdict? Well, we got unambiguous evidence that molten glass maintains its transparency to both red and green light. Congratulations to everyone who guessed correctly and I hope you weigh in on my next silly what if. This video would not have been possible without the expertise and help of the University of Victoria glass shop. The glass blower was actually the one who suggested using a lathe over a hand roller, and it really paid off. I'd also like to thank Andre Godin for his camera work. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe, comment, and like. Your feedback really helps motivate me to continuously improve on these videos. And remember, when in doubt, use science!